What is a frame rate? Why are frame rates important? And which frame rate should you be using to shoot your videos? Frame rates become a lot easier to understand when you think about video like you do photography. When we're watching video, what we are effectively seeing is lots of individual still images played back really quickly so it looks like that image is moving. Exactly the same as in a paper flipbook. So if you imagine drawing an image on the corner of a page throughout a book, slightly different on every page, and then you flick through the pages super quick, it looks like that image is moving. That's pretty much exactly the same as what video is. So for example, a frame rate of 24 frames per second is 24 still images played back within that second and that carries on so 50 frames a second will be 50 images per second and that is effectively all a frame rate is it's nice and simple to understand where it gets a little bit trickier though is understanding where and when you should use these different frame rates but i'm going to show you how in this video let's get into it Very quickly, just before we go any further, if you're new here to this channel, my name is Scott Edwards. I make all sorts of photography, video, tech, creativity related videos. So if they're the sorts of things you are interested in, consider clicking that little subscribe button just down below there and come and be a part of this community. First things first, you want to check what region of the world you are in. And when I say this, I mean, are you in a PAL region or an NTSC region? just editing this video now and I've realized what I've said I've got a little bit mixed up I said America is a PAL and Europe an NTSC region it's the other way around so whatever I say from now on I mean it the opposite way around easy mistake to make but back to the video you want to check that and then set your camera accordingly to whichever region you are in now typically America is a PAL region and Europe and most other parts of the world are NTSC. I'm not going to get into technical nonsense as to why that matters, but if you set your camera to the wrong region, you're going to be shooting the wrong frame rate because they differ slightly and that means that you might get things like flickery lights in the background. So basically you want to set it to the region you are in and then use the frame rates that your camera suggests. For the sake of this video, I'm going to talk about what I use here in England and that is NTSC because we are in Europe and just if you are in a PAL region, just be aware that frame rates will differ slightly, but 24 frames is effectively 25 frames anyway. Just before we get into the actual frame rates, I just very quickly want to mention shutter speed because it is just as important. Pretty much all of the time when you are shooting video, you're going to want your shutter speed to be double your frame rate. So if you are shooting with 25 frames a second, like I am right now, you want your shutter speed to be double that, which is 50 which is again what I'm using now. And what that allows is just nice natural motion blur. It's as close as to the eye as to what you see in real life. And you get that nice natural motion blur. So if I move my hand really quick, you can see it's nice and blurry. I'll mention this again later on and it will all make sense if it doesn't right now. This frame rate is often heard as being the most cinematic. It's the one that you use if you want things to look real and natural. So for example, I'm shooting in 25 frames a second now because I'm just doing a talking headshot. I don't need to slow it down or anything. I just want this to look as real as it possibly can. Cinema, movies, and even television programs, documentaries are typically shot within 25 frames a second as well because of that reason. It is as natural as to what you see in everyday life with your eyes and it feels more immersive because of that. 50 frames a second is typically used to slightly slow things down. It can be used subtly and it just adds an extra element to your videos. You can slow it down by 50% in your timeline when you are editing. What that means is you are gonna get some nice 50% slow motion, so half the speed things normally happen in, and that just adds a little bit of variety into your videos and changes it up a little bit and makes it more interesting to the viewer. It can be used to shoot B-roll, so you can get some nice smooth cinematic sequences, or you can even use it for other reasons, such as maybe you're shooting someone walking and you just want to slow it down a little or emphasize some other movement in another way. 100 frames a second 
is your typical slow motion shot that we see all over YouTube. It can be slowed down to 25% when you are editing in your timeline, which adds a really unique look because we don't see that slow motion at all. It's really different to anything that we see with our human eye. So to have that adds a really unique look to it and just helps draw the viewer into your videos even more. You can add suspense, you can build intrigue with it, you can add emotion with slow motion. That rhymes, that sounds cool, emotion with slow motion. You can add emotion with slow motion, which is typically why it is used in a lot of wedding videos as well. And again, it can also be used to smooth out B-roll footage so you can get some really high quality high production value on your videos with nice smooth cinematic shots of maybe a product you are making a video about. The one thing with 100 frames a second or 120 frames a second or slow motion in general, don't use it too much. It's good in moderation, just don't overdo it. Time for a quick demonstration. I have come to the canal. I'm gonna run up and down here, run, yes, in different frame rates so you can see what the difference is. I've also forgotten my ND filter so I've had to crack my aperture but I don't think that's a bad thing for this. I'm just going to get it done as quickly as possible before people start looking at me for being weird. First 25 frames a second. So that should look like normal motion. Now 50. Slightly slower. Now 100. Slow low. Ooh. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, I have been using the 180 degree rule the whole way through this video and what that means again is my shutter speed has been double my frame rate and that means you can get that nice natural motion blur and I'll show you what that means now. So for example right now you can see that my shutter speed, well you can't see it but I'm telling you my shutter speed is 1 50th of a second because my frame rate is 25 frames a second and I'm getting that nice natural motion blur. Get blurry hand as I move my hand. Then if I slow my shutter speed down, obviously it gets a lot brighter so I'm going to have to compensate with the aperture because we're letting more light into the lens. But right now I'm still shooting in 25 frames a second but it looks really weird. It looks almost like a time lapse, hyperlapse sort of thing and it just doesn't look very good. It might work in certain situations though. I'm gonna change it back. That might work in certain situations though. For example, maybe you're shooting a drunk scene in a movie or a short film that you're making and you need to show what that person is feeling. Being able to change your shutter speed like that would help to create that effect. And it works the other way as well. So if I increase the shutter speed, boost my ISO this time, so it might go a little bit grainy but uh, right now I'm at 2500 ISO, so that's why it's grainy. But right now I've increased my shutter speed to 250th of a second and it just looks a bit choppy. So if I now do that same hand movement, you're not getting a nice natural motion blur. It looks choppy if I can go even faster. I'm now at 500th of a second. You're almost just seeing, seeing stills of my hand. So again, that just proves why you want to uh, use the 180 degree rule. So I'm getting distracted, changing my settings. So we're now back at the 180 degree rule. So 50th of a second, 25 frames a second, we get the nice natural motion blur. You can see the difference. It makes a huge difference. Again, play around with it all you like because it might suit that style of filming that you are trying to create within what you are making. Now you might be asking yourself, why can't I just shoot everything in 100 frames a second with a shutter speed of 200th of a second and then only slow it down if I need to, so just play it back as it's filmed. Don't do that. I'm going to show you a side by side right now. 
So the clip on the left is shot in 25 frames a second with a shutter speed of 50, and the clip on the right is 100 frames a second with a shutter speed of 200. So they're both using the 180 degree rule. However, the 100 frames a second one, even though it's not slowed down, doesn't look the same. It doesn't look as cinematic. It looks a lot more fluidy. That's the only way I can describe it. It doesn't look quite right. So if you want the most cinematic footage, shoot in 25 frames a second and change your shutter speed and your frame rate if you need to. So hopefully that helps you out a little bit if you are a little bit confused as you are getting into learning about different frame rates and why you need to change it up and use different ones in different situations. There are always going to be different situations. There's always going to be times where you need to be a little bit creative and maybe you do need to change your shutter speed for your frame rate and things like that is always going to differ slightly but rule of thumb, change your frame rates up where you need to. Don't just use the same ones throughout the video. It adds intrigue, it helps keep your viewers interested in the video, just changes it up a little bit. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. See you in the next one.